Hi, Sandy. I just need to check the computer and make sure that I'm showing up. Um, so give me just one second. Just want to make sure I'm going live. Hi, Vesta. Okay. Okay, I found myself. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. I'm going to try and get some glare out of there. Hi, Linda. Linda, where are you watching from? Hi, Pat. And Teresa. So good to see so many of you on. Hi, Tony. Thank you for sharing. And Sharon, hello. Oh, Stretch is trying to get up here again. He must know when we're going live. Hi, Pat. And Karen. Good morning, good morning. So not as bitterly cold as it was last week here in Northwest Ohio. We had a little bit of rain snow mix this morning and next week they're calling for like three days in the 50s. So we go from this really extreme cold to the 50s. That's going to be interesting, but I don't think we're done with winter. Hi, Kathy. So it's so good to see so many on here. Hi, Judy and Kathy. Wonderful. Okay, so today's live, um, I don't have a finished card to show you because we're going to do it together. I thought I would kind of go out on a limb and um, just create on the fly with everybody. <clears throat> and then we can, just a second. <clears throat> and then we can show our finished cards or projects over in the group. Hi, Brenda. So, um, I don't, I have kind of like something I was, um, toying with when I first, um, thought about doing this project. I can show you that, but it's not, um, it's not finished. It was just something to get me started. So if you've ever liked or loved the look of hand applique on quilts, um, we can recreate that using, uh, punches and dies or fussy cutted images. The applique sits on top of the background fabric. And, um, so when we punch things out or die cut them, they already have the, you know, and you put them down on your, your background, they have that raised look, which reminds me of hand applique. So, um, this past weekend, I took all of my cardstock scraps that I'd been accumulating and, um, I just went on a weekend spree of cutting as many flowers and greenery that I could so that number one, I have a lot of variety to choose from, but also now that they're cut and I have them in these little dishes, um, they're ready to go for another project. I don't have to take the time to uh, do that die cutting or the punching um, at the time that I'm making the card because I've already got uh, a little stash that I can get into and it'll save me some time. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Peggy. Peggy, where are you um, watching from? I see a lot of new names, which is great. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm, I am um, rubbing the head of Stretch here, trying to keep him from not jumping up onto the table and greeting everybody like he did last week. So I'm just trying to keep him at bay, satisfy him because he's a very loving cat. Um, I am going to flip the camera around and I got um, some bits of happy mail. Hi, Michaeleen. How are you? Were you surprised to see that your card is gracing the cover photo? Hi, Deborah, for the group. There were over 26 entries from last week's card. And it was so awesome to hear my phone ping uh, telling me 
that there's um, a notification in the group because that usually meant a picture. From Bend, Oregon. Okay. So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm also going to move my computer because I need the space to get um, my paper trimmer in camera. So let's do this first. Um, if I can remember how to do it. Flip that around. Oh, and look at, can you see the little, the bird there? These birds are really popular at our Target store. And I wasn't a collector. They've been around for a while. But I've been getting them from my friends. And they are just the cutest little thing. So I didn't know that it would be in the, in the uh, camera there, but... <laughs> So, I just have to rearrange some things. And let me move my computer. You know, I swear, no matter how much room I think I have for everything... I never have enough room. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera up. And down. I need to set that back. Come on, stay. Hopefully, I don't dump everybody. And now I've got two. There we go. There we go. As you can tell, I have my bird guides um, that my camera mount sits on so I can get it a little bit higher. Okay. Okay. I think we can get going. So my name is Julie Heights. I'm the chirpy card maker of quilts and more, and I live in Toledo, Ohio. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, February host code. If there's anything that uh, from Stampin' Up that that uh, you need or want is this right here. If you don't have a demonstrator and you would like to shop with me and you use that host code, I would appreciate it. Um, let's do some happy mail. And I covered it up when I'm trying to rearrange everything. Okay. So... I've got a couple of Valentines to show you. This one is from Nancy Young. And she took her half square triangles and folded them over into a pinwheel. And she's got her background and her little red heart. And from my heart to yours. So that's a very cute Valentine. Thank you, Nancy. And Vesta sent me a Valentine's card. Look how pretty this is. All the shimmer and the sparklies. And what I love is that she actually used red ink on the inside with her message. I thought that was really, really just that finishing touch to Valentine's Day. So thank you, Vesta, so much. And their stretch has made it onto my table. No. Stretch, oh my goodness, you are going to knock something over. How graceful can you be? You're getting down. Down, down, down. Your fan club <clears throat> does not want to see you today. Okay, and then... I want to show you this really cute thank you card from Vesta also. And this is the polar bear stamp set. 
But I want to show you how she used Wink Estella and colored the Wink Estella. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera. But it gives this card this beautiful icy Arctic feel. So I wanted to show you that because what really makes this is the Wink Estella that's on there. So I'm hoping that that can come through. And then Marilyn Uno from Hawaii had sent me um, a package. And um, this was, I guess, to be a Christmas ornament, but we're past Christmas. But I told her it doesn't matter because this is getting hung up year round. But this is a wrought iron um, heart with a cardinal sitting in it <clears throat> and I believe I've never been to Hawaii um, but I have looked at the birds that you can find in Hawaii and they have a beautiful cardinal that's totally different to our northern cardinal that we see here um, in north you know in the we're not the midwest um, but like you know Indiana, Ohio, I mean, the Northern Cardinals range is wide, but the further you go west, and then when you get to Hawaii, they, their Cardinal is totally different, and it's beautiful. So I told her that this is going to hang somewhere year-round so I can really, really um, admire it the whole time. So that was really pretty. And... Then she also made this book binding fold card. It says, you are lovely. And it looks like we've got pinking shears or a decorative um, scissor that, made, that gave her the ruffled edges on the strips. And she made one of our strip flowers and put it on there. So thank you, everyone, for the Happy Meal. And I'm just going to check. Okay. So. Let me. Bring in. What I've been. What I was playing with. And. That is. This. Um, right here. I encourage you to Google. Google. Um, hand applique borders or go on Pinterest and type that in because you'll get a lot of beautiful images and hand applique can be anywhere from very primitive to absolutely stunning where they would like ruche their fabric into flowers and and it, it's just mind-blowing but <clears throat> what they all have in common is they will have a stem that they can position their flowers and leaves around and create um, that flow of flowers. And so that's what I was um, wanting to mimic here on the card. So this was just one that I was playing around with. What I'm going to show you how to do first is... I'm hoping that you can see the quilt pattern, the the crosshatch. Let me stand up here. There you go. This background was created just using the scoring blade on my trimmer because I don't have an embossing folder that mimics the crosshatch. We, we used to have an embossing folder tufted something. And I never picked it up. So, not to let that deter me, and you can use any um, bag embossing folder if you want to do that on your applique. But what I wanted to show you was, you don't have to have all that stuff in order to mimic a quilted background. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that with the scoring blade. I'm using my paper trimmer. I don't have 
the um, <clears throat> the big scoring tool. So I'm going to show you on my trimmer, but I'm sure that you can, if you use the scoring, the big square thing, you can you can mimic it too. Okay, so you don't have to have all the fancy stuff to get the results that you want. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. And we're not using the dark gray blade because that's your cutting blade. We're using the light gray one, which is our scoring blade. And I cut my, um, my basic white here to four and an eighth by five and three eighths because I want to have as much room to create my applique on as possible. And this will actually, when you put it on your card, will give you just that little tiny border around the outside. But I wanted as much room to create on as possible. So that's why it's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh my goodness, I don't know why this happens right when I want to go live. Is we are going to put one of our bottom corners with the the point in the the cutting track here. <clears throat> the opposite corner is going to be in, you know, the corner's going to be on the cutting track also. But when I say cutting track, we're not cutting, we're scoring. So I'm going to close the guard here. And I am going to just score from corner to corner. Now, you don't want to press too hard with your scoring blade because depending on what you're using, you can actually cut your paper. But you want that um, score to be deep enough that you're going to see the effect of the quilting that we're going to do. So I'm going to open it up. And I am going to move this score line to the half inch line on the, um, the plate here of my trimmer. So I know if I go over two vertical lines, that's a half an inch. So I'm going to just line up my score line, half inch. Here's my half inch mark. I've got what I previously scored sitting at half an inch. And don't worry about if it's not perfect. So I've moved my... <clears throat> my basic white over a half an inch. I'm going to close the guard and I'm going to score again. I'm going to move that over a half an inch now. And I'm going to keep doing this till I run out of room. Move it over a half an inch. And like I said, just keep going. Just move it over. I like to be I like to be able to see my half inch from where my score starts all the way to the end. So sometimes I end up moving up my my trimmer here just so that I can see that straight line. And move it over again. I almost grabbed that cutting blade. <laughs> and then see if we can get one more out of here. Not that this little corner matters, but now we're going to turn it around and we're going to do, we, we got to score this side. So I just turned it to where I've got my first score and I'm going to put that on the half inch mark 
and we're just gonna repeat what we did to the other side. Score, move it over a half an inch. And when we're done with this, we're going to do it in the opposite direction so that we have that crosshatch appearance on our background. So even though you don't have an embossing folder that would give you a similar look, you can achieve it just using a scoring tool of some sort. Because what we're doing is we're mimicking embossing. Oh, there I, I didn't go over right, but that's okay. I can use that and we can cover it up with some flowers. But see how it gives on the back that ridge. So now we're going to, we've got it all done going this way. Now we want to make our cross hatches going that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to just turn it, put it back into our trimmer, put those corners in the track, and we're going to go the opposite way. Okay, half inch, not a quarter inch, Julie, half inch. And I'll end up covering up that boo-boo that I made by putting a flower or something over it. Or even um, I might be able to hide it with a sentiment. Um, it's really no big deal. We're just going to cover it up. I was laying in bed one night trying to go to sleep. Seems like whenever I want to go to sleep, that's when my wheels start spinning about different ideas. And um, something told, you know, just spoke to me. I'm just going to leave that alone there. No, I'm going to finish it. Some just spoke to me about creating a crosshatch pattern by using the scoring blade and so I had to try it and it worked. So now we're gonna move this over a half an inch. Takes just a little bit of time to do this but I really like the effect that it has for the background of our applique. If you look at, um, I found a lot of images where this crosshatch quilt, quilting was actually done around the applique images. It was in the in the background there. So it lends itself to the design really well. And what I also found was, is because with you scoring it, you're not getting that super deep embossing. When you glue down your um, flowers and your greenery, it actually, um, the glue takes to the background because you don't have really bumpy uh, raised areas. So there's the crosshatch quilting to our card. I'm just going to try and find that for you. Okay, so there's our, that's our background. If you look on the back, you could use either side. Okay, it's up to you. So that's our background. We got our quilting done. Any questions about that part? Hi, Paula from Michigan. Hi, Jean. Thank you for sharing. Hello, Patty. Okay, so we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going on here. Um, I'm gonna get out. What do I do with my silicone mat? Because we're gonna I'm gonna be using some glue. So 
Um, now I'm going to show you my little collection of greenery. Um, here I have, oh, let's start, let's start with the main vine, the vein, the main stem. You can cut a gentle curve out of regular cardstock and make your stem as wide as you want. Okay. Um, in the quite curvy bundle that's retired, there's a die. And so what I did was. I used that die and I loved the texture that these dots gave my stem. But when you cut, it only cuts on one edge. But if you look closely, there is a groove here, like a score along the other side that you can just take your scissors or your snips and you can just follow that score right along and cut this off of the cardstock because the die doesn't cut on both sides. So that's what I did. But you could hand draw a, a really loose S on your cardstock and cut, cut it out and that would give you a nice gentle curve also. So that's how I got my stem. I just cut it off the cardstock. So what I like to start with first is positioning where I might, where I want my stem and where do I want all the curves? I want it I want to give it some nice flow. So you just figure out where you want your curves. And then what I've got extra hanging over both ends, I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to wrap it around to the back so that it it just has a really nice um pretty edge to the cardstock. I don't I I really like it, what, the look of it when it's wrapped around at the back instead of just bluntly cutting it off there. So I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, whatever you're using for a stem and whatever you're using as an adhesive, just go ahead and put that down. Try and not get the glue in those holes because it will come up through there. Okay. So I'm going to keep it not too close to the edge because I want to have room to lay some flowers and some leaves. So I'm just going to come in like right about here. And I'm just going to lay that down. And then my extra... I'm just going to fold that to the back. I just like the look that it wasn't abruptly cut off. See how nice when it wraps it around? It just has a much prettier finish. So we've got, we've got our stem. The next thing that I would want to work with is you, you might want to go right to your flowers, but I like to get my greenery in next. So some choices for greenery. Um, I used a lot, I cut a lot of dyes from the Pierced Blooms uh, die set. Um, back when um, Stampin' Up! had a sale on the the dies I got it and not really sure if I liked it but I wanted to I wanted some florals and some greenery um, to my die uh, collection and what turned out to be for this purpose but I didn't know it at the time 
But I'm telling you, I love this die set. If you like making quilt cards and you like the look of applique, I, the, you got to have this die set in your stash. Um, because you you get so many different so many different leaves. Um, it's it's just wonderful. And this particular die right here, look how pretty this looks. No matter what color you. Uh, what color cardstock you use. It is just stunning. I just love it. So I would recommend that die, um, that die set for your quilting, um, your quilt card needs if you're into this kind of thing. And then this, this particular um, greenery is from well at the time the collection was like the bird the bird ballad i mean it's got the one with the birds and the nest in it what i like is that i can snip off parts of this long stem i can cut parts of it off and use it i love these little circles that are on there so just look at your greenery and and Look at it like, okay, I'm going to cut that up. So, I'm going to just dump dump all my leaves here. And I got a lot of them. And what we're going to do is we're just going to play with placement of leaves. And it doesn't have to be the same, the same color green as your stem. Give it some variety. And um, in the applique uh, quilts that I looked at, you'll notice that some will do their hand applique right up to the stem. Others will move it away from the stem. Your options are totally open on how you want to, um, and even their flowers. Some of their flowers are right on the stem. Others were away from the stem. So it, it's it's up to you. Y your options are many, and there is no right and wrong, wrong way to do this. So just going to play with looking at some leaves and some different sized That would look good right here if you had a small flower coming off your vine. I'm going to hold on to that one. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of playing at this point. If you put that right there. That might be all I want to do right now for my for my leaves. I can always go back in and tuck little leaves in behind my flowers. But this gives me a, me an idea where my open spaces still are to add those flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put you can use glue dots, you can use your liquid glue, your tape runner, Whatever you like to use. I'm just going to butt that up to there. Push it down because remember we've got these grooves so the glue needs to get down in there. We'll go ahead and put this one down. So we're just creating on the fly today if you're just tuning in. I would suggest that you quilt several um, of these backgrounds so that you can create more card fronts because what happens is your wheels start spinning and you're like, oh, 
I wish I would have done that. And then you have another layer that you could go back and put that idea down. So glue dots, um, sometimes I've got my glue dots out because sometimes like for the small flowers, it's just easier to do it that way. And then let's just lay this right about, right in the vine, right about there. You can have your, your leaves falling onto your vine. So what do you think so far? Is this something that, you, that you're going to enjoy doing? Oh, Paula's talking about the macrame folder. Oh, you know, I don't have that one. I might have to take another look at that. Oh, Michaeline, did so you're you're what you're saying is the quilting in the background was the crosshatch. And Tony used um the tufted embossing folder. I wonder if Stampin' Up would ever like bring back some some oldies but goodies <laughs> and offer them again. Um that would be wonderful. So, getting your leaves down first allows you to see what open areas that you have next for your flowers. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I can come back to my leaves. But I, I need to get, get them out of my way for now. And you can tell I was on a cutting spree. And I'm still not done with all of my scraps that I have. But I am going to go through all my, my dies and my punches. And instead of having those scraps just sitting around, I'm going to get ahead of the game for future projects and have them die cut. So, if you don't have the die cuts, look at your punches. There's this little flower here. You could use the daisy punches. Um, now, the tulip is really big, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't have a large tulip in there. Use what you have. And then there, um, this, I believe, may be retired, but it's, it's a leaf punch so you don't have to you're not you don't have to count yourself out because you don't have a die cutting machine or dies punches work and so does fussy cutting I'm sure you have a lot of um, paper that has floral images and leaves and you could just fussy cut those okay so what I love about the the pierce blooms though is it does have that stitching that helps mimic some quilting there so that's what another reason why i like it so now let's look at our choices for flowers now in that pierced bloom there's a lot of smaller flowers so this collection here got big really fast and not all of it's the same um die cutting set this one here is from the um, home and hearth collection i think it is out of the new catalog but for the most part the painted blooms now this this flower right here this is a really good size for um your applique so is this um this shape right here that could maybe lay up there somewhere. And then like with the little ones and mix up your colors. Um, what you could do is come off of this stem right here with this little flower, put that there 
and then you could even build on that flower by giving it some kind of a center. Like you could put a center in that flower there. Um, another reason why I like this die set because of the building potential that you can do with layering. So I'm going to dump out my littles there. And again, I have different size flowers. There's even these real pretty um, daisy looking flowers. I need a pop of color here. Maybe a coastal cabana right there. Be careful how much you run over off of your um, background too because we've only got a small border be before you know for it to fit on the card so i don't know maybe don't know that may be right here or put that right there put this over here it's just playing with playing with your flowers and where you want now what I want to do is I like my big images but I also want to fill in with some smaller pieces and You'll notice in a lot of hand applique, they'll put like a little trio of, of flowers together. Um, they'll just be like tucked in little areas. Even got these little star our ones and in this in this vine I want I really want to get a nice mix of color I wonder if we could build on top of that one with <laughs> see decisions decisions but when you've got all these options it really is more fun. Nope, I don't like that. This one shape here really seems to lend well to layering also. And then you could go back in with a little white center like that. Um, we could go this one right here, I'm trying to find, find it in a different color that would sit well on that purple. Oh, what if we just did a darker purple? Oh, Ooh, look at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't even know if I'd put a center in that. Or, I mean, maybe we could. Maybe we could finish it off with that right there. And not all your flowers have to be layered. But, boy, look at the different possibilities here. And then let's look at maybe... I want to put another small flower there, but now it comes down to what color is that flower going to be? With what I've got here. I want some contrast. That doesn't have enough contrast to me. Maybe a little blue, maybe a little blue flower there. And then... Now here I still have some open area, so if I would want to come back and maybe 
that leaf might be a little too big. I'm gonna have to dump all my all my leaves because now I gotta see what I got here. I may have to cut down. Well, here's a smaller one. I could fill in this area here with another leaf. And I like mixing up the colors of my greenery. I try to make myself go out of the norm. Nope. I try to force myself to play with with color and not get stuck into what is realistic. If we put, no, I don't really like that one right there. I can always also take, I want something lighter. I could take this one right here and I could cut this off or cut the stem. I could cut it off right, right there and put it, oh boy. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off down here because I can always go back and cut that stem off. And I could add a flower to this too. I like it going off. I like it going off of my my background a little bit. But remember, I got to be able, it can't extend past the card. Um, I don't know. I'm going to leave that right there for now. Not really feeling it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and I like how these layered together. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put my flowers together. Not really sure. I didn't cut my card base yet, and I didn't do anything with a sentiment yet because I need to see how much room I'm going to have left when I'm done filling in my vine. I'm going to put that right in the center. Give it a good push so that that glue gets in all these little holes that have been made by to give it that pierced look. And then we're going to put this right about like that a nice push. The liquid glue lets me play with it a little bit before I, before everything catches. And then, come on glue. And I think I had this just it may not go down exactly where I had it before, but that's okay. And what you can do also is, instead of layering the centers of your flowers, you can, um, like on this one, I used a little rhinestone in the middle to finish it off, to give it just a little bit of bling, like, Perhaps the applique, um, the applicator added some beads 
uh, beading to her quilt, which I've been to some quilt shows where the art quilts have had beading crystals and stuff added to them. Oh my goodness, they're gorgeous. Put that down. And then we'll go ahead and put our little flowers down. But you, you get the gist, right, of what we're doing here. We're just building along our vine. Now, something I saw online and didn't get to is you could have little birds. If you have um, punches or die cuts of birds, you can um, put little birds in your, in your design, butterflies, um, Oh my goodness, the possibilities are endless. Endless. But when I saw the ones with the birds, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to go back and do that. For those of you who are new, one of my favorite things to do is to go birding. I took up birding back in 2013. It actually started, I got a... My husband got me a, a camera for my 50th birthday. And a friend of mine said, birds will give you good practice. So I went out looking for birds to practice photography. And then it was like, I want to know what all these, what these birds are. And so I got hooked when I went to my first bird walk. And I've been birding ever since. So, I get a little crazy over birds. <laughs> so, that'll be a little bit of info for those of you who are new. I do keep a life list. And a life list is the birds that you saw for the first time. Those go on your life list. I'm up to like 348, which may seem like a lot. But... It isn't really. North America has North America has a lot of birds in it. I used to know the number. I've got to get out of my area if I want to add any more to my list. Just keep pushing these down to make sure that they're flat. Okay, so there we got that. I'm still thinking I need I need some greenery there. I think I'm going to cut this stem off right here. And maybe let that overlap a little bit onto the stem. Or do I want this color? Oh, now I don't know what I want to do. There's still room for I don't know if I want to do a flower or some greenery right there. Let's look for a bold leaf. A bold leaf of a lighter color. Just to bring in some more green. I could do that one. Could put in just another one of the same leaf right here. Which is what I might do. Kind of covers up my... My flower will be tucked in behind it. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. So, today it's all going to be about playing with building your applique. And then we can show our finished cards over in the group, which is called Quilt Cards and More. So I'm thinking I might want to add a flower, something with some punch. Oh, I think I might add that one right there. 
Melon Mambo is such a pretty color to add to your cards for flowers. And I'm going to let this hang off just a little bit. And I'm going to fill that area in with Hmm, with, do I have a little tiny white star punch? A little white star. Or, you know what? That circle might be too big. That's a little too big. Where's our little stars? Oh, right here's one. Here's a white one might just fit that in right there. Or I can take a, we could take a rhinestone. I think I'm going to fill it in with a rhinestone instead of keep building my layers or even a pearl to fill in there. So I'm going to keep my options open. Don't think that you have to Finish it right away. You can start one of these and you can walk away and come back to it. But we're just, this here, I think it needs something more. Ugh. Nope, not that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. thinking a bold center, but it might not be that. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like that blue. My, I kind of like that blue. stretch. You are not getting up here. Oh, what about Calypso Coral? Ooh. I, mm, I think I might like the Calypso Coral. Now here, not really sure which would what that no 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 I think I might go with the calypso coral this, I'm telling you this pierced bloom set it is you can make so many different flowers just building on top of each other so let's Hmm. So I haven't put that leaf down yet. Hmm. <laughs> what? Hmm. I really don't know. Since I've already started cutting up this one, let's just see what would happen if I would put no. No. Nope. See, it's just a matter of playing. It's like, oh, what else do I... Like, when I'm looking at how tiny of a leaf do I have that I could... But it just depends on where... How the leaf is pointing out. Now, had I put this blue flower on top of the leaf, it would hide most of it and it would look in proportion. So, um, that is something to think about for the next one. But I'm just feeling like I need... I don't know what I need right here. Oh boy. We're at our hour. Um, gosh, I just don't know. It's almost like I need maybe another little flower right there. What about if we put that flirty flamingo flower right there, and then I could put a rhinestone in the center. 
I think it's giving it a nice, but what if we, before we do that, tuck a leaf And sometimes the leaf just doesn't make sense. Like no matter where you try to put it, it just doesn't work. So what if we just left it with our flower and then just looking at the flow of it, I might be just okay with it as it is. And again, I just may when we're when we're done i might just go fix some lunch and walk away from this and see what else i might want to do how's everybody else is anybody else doing it along um is it a new set sharon no it's not um I can show it to you if you get your annual catalog and go to the dies. It's on page 165. It's up in the um, upper right hand corner. It's called Pierce Blooms. Look at all, you get stems. Look at all the different um, greenery and the different flowers. There's even a bow. Let me show you how pretty the Where's my bow? Where's my dish that has my bows in it? Oh, right here. Look at how cute that bow is. And everybody needs bows to tie into their cards sometimes. But that uh, die cut right there makes a really pretty bow. Um, some of the other flower images are these big ones like that's that one right there so the pierce bloom set is on page 165 of the annual catalog just in case you're wondering about that okay everybody i think well it's, it's been an hour and i know that you have other you know i i have you know other demonstrators uh, like to do Thursday lives and I like to watch them too. <laughs> um, my upline Karen Titus will be coming on soon. So I like to see um, what ideas she has for everybody. So I'm going to let you go for now, but just keep playing with your, with your applique and then wherever you have room. I think if you went with a tiny sentiment, or you don't even have to put a sentiment sentiment on the front of your card. Just look at where you've got room and whether it competes with um, what you got going on. You may want to leave this alone and just have this beautiful image. And then when they open the card, it says, you know, what you want it to say. Or I would go really tiny. Um, I'd go with a tiny sentiment maybe down here. Or if maybe if you had a vertical sentiment, you could put it over here or even something small up there. Or here's a lot of room. You could put your sentiment right here. If you're trying to fill this area up, but nothing seems to be working, maybe stamp your, your sentiment um, and then use a punch to punch it out and maybe even pop it up on dimensionals and put your sentiment right there. That would really, that I might do that because I didn't like where the leaf looked there. So maybe this is telling me, Julie, your sentiment needs to go right here. That'll fill up that space. And then I don't have to put anything in my corners. Oh, look at, here's my boo-boo corner. I might have to put, might have to put something over that. I don't know what it'll be, but I might have to look at that. And then it could be that nobody's even going to notice that. So, so I hope you have fun and, and I want you to post your, your cards, um, over on the group page next Wednesday night. 
out of those who share their um, applique cards, then I will put your name on the wheel. We'll give it a spin and see whose card is the cover photo for our group for the following week. So again, today was mostly about technique and how to um, mimic hand applique. And I can't wait to see what everybody does with their cards. All right. Oh, thank you for the hearts. Uh, where did you get the containers? <laughs> well, Judy, for a while there, my husband and I, we like the Wednesday special at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And these are the containers that the mashed potatoes <laughs> and gravy came in and coleslaw. I got a ton of these. I just could not bear to throw the containers away. It's like, no, they have a purpose. So, um, yeah, these are from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Got a cute little red lid that says KFC. But they make great storage. <laughs> so thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, Tony's got two cards done. Well, we can't wait to see those. I will go back through the comments, answer any questions, uh, but just have fun with it. And like I said, if you feel like it, you got to walk away from it, just walk away and come back, see it with a pair of fresh eyes and, and go from, from there with your design. Okay, everybody? So I will see you next week. That's all I got. Can't wait to get those notifications on my phone that somebody posted to the group. Everybody have a blessed day, and I'll see you next week.